Our species this week is fast, powerful, delicious, and attacks their prey with their incredibly razor sharp teeth. That's right, Rick. From screaming drag and smoking reels to the smoker, we're talking kingfish on the Florida Insider Fishing Report, which starts now. now. Welcome to the Florida Insider Fishing Report, presented by Yamaha. Welcome to the Florida Insider Fishing Report. We hope everyone stayed safe and is recovering from Hurricane Debbie. But Rick, this week we are talking about kingfish and you always say that storms have a way of enhancing fishing conditions sometimes. You're absolutely right, Bree. You know, it's nature's way of scrubbing the bottom, getting rid of all the impurities. It stirs the bottom up. Captain Page actually said to me this week he's a little concerned that maybe we get a little taste of red tide. I hope that he's incorrect. But nevertheless, yeah. nature's way is to have hurricanes, floods, all kinds of stuff that come with them. Right. All right. Well, let's see what Dave is getting ready for this week to rig up at the CCA workbench. Dave, what's going on over I'm there? I'm not bringing any floods. You know, that's, that's good. not my business. That's but good. I, we are going to be talking about uh, kingfish. So I always like to catch at least one every trip. Every trip offshore. At least one. Yep. Get some dip going. Exactly. All right, the Star Trend Central West region is up first this week, so let's see uh, when the Kings are taking over with Captain Jeff Page. Hey, Page. Good evening, uh, folks. And, you know, this time of year in the Star Trend Central West region, which is middle of the summer, we have a few residential kingfish. Uh, but our prime time kingfish bite is early spring, right up into tarpon season, and then of course in the fall, with a lot of bigger fish being taken in that springtime, probably due to that long cold winter, and those fish have been traveling from down south up towards the panhandle, or vice versa. So you're going to want to pay attention. Big schools of bait, probably the number one ticket and that most guys target their kingfish with. And of course, bottom structure. It can be artificial reefs, it can be hard bottom areas, it can even be an old wreck. Anything that's gonna hold bait is gonna, the kingfish are gonna track around. Now, there's a few different ways we catch them in our region. Probably the number one way is trolling lipped plugs or live baits, and you can use planers. A lot of times these days, Rick, these lip plugs get down pretty deep without the assistance of a planer. But if you're going to troll a blue runner or even a spoon, it's a good idea maybe to use a, a, a planer. And then the other thing that guys do in our region, and it really helps with these new anchor lock modes that are on most of the better trolling motors, is you can get around some of that action, and it may just be Spanny Max you're seeing jump, Spanish mackerels jumping, but don't think those kingfish aren't underneath them, and you can sometimes chum those fish up to the top or just drag or free line baits in and around the bait schools, and you're going to hook up. I even have a friend, Rick, and he's done it with me, so I've seen it done. He'll, he'll take pinfish and put them out under a cork, kind of just like you do with tarpon fishing. And I've seen him hooked good kingfish doing that, but he's also got some wire down there by that hook. Now, the other one is the blue runner. That's probably the number one live bait that we use in, in our region, for especially for slow trolling for those kings. My photo tonight is with a really happy client with most of a kingfish oh. that he caught with Captain Brian Marcy that I bet was really big at one time, but the tax man got the tail end of him. Wow, that stinks. All right, tell me about the snappers. <laughs> Mango snapper, uh, it remains really consistent. And like you said at the opening of the show, this, this, this rainwater seems to fire those mangoes up. And 70 feet, they can be in as close as out to 150. The key has been getting your boat set up on the right side of the structure and getting those chum bags out and bringing those fish up to the top, which a lot of the captains have been having really good success doing. And then what they like to do, Rick, is they like to scissor up small pieces of thread fins or filters, and then maybe use a piece on a hook or maybe using a whole one, just depending on how picky they are that day. With this rainwater, you can probably bump your leader up to 30, even 40 pound fluorocarbon. And uh, my photo tonight is 
uh, from the Flying Hawaiian, Kalen Olair out of Stump Pass Marina with a nice limit of mangs. He's about to fillet. And then we're moving inshore. Lots of scattered tarpon around. And this is another. This rain is probably going to get these fish fired up. I know they do down your way. But they've moved into the passes and up into the bays. And they'll even be in the back part of bays, especially where you got a lot of that small hatch bait and small fry bait sizzling on the top. If the winds are down, you'll probably see the tarpons rolling in them. If it's a little choppy and you're catching ladyfish, you're in the right zip code with that bait schools where those ladyfish are because those tarpons are usually right in there with them. Now, the guys that have been doing real well on artificial subsurface plugs like the stick shad or the Mirodine in a chartreuse or a golden brown pattern, and then fly fishermen, my buddy Kevin Wetzel's been doing really well early morning, small dark colored flies, working it in and around the bait schools ahead of the rolling fish and having good bites. Now, nighttime around the bridges, Peace River Bridge, uh, New Pass Bridge, Longboat Pass Bridge, Live Lady Fish, and Silver Mullet have been the ticket. I've got a photo tonight of Ray Culver Jr. put that gentleman on that tarpon out off the coast of Anna Maria. And my last species tonight, redfish. You know we're getting into August, which leads to September. Redfish are moving in, and with all this tannic water flushing out of the creeks, Look for those redfish pushing up into the Manatee River. Again, they're looking for that same small fry bait. So if you see schools of ladyfish and jacks feeding on that, don't think there's not redfish in the mix. I had a couple young uh, anglers the other day, and we were catching bluefish and jacks. The next thing we knew, both guys were hooked up to 28-inch redfish. As we approach this full moon, look for the redfish to really fire off. Afternoon low tides or early morning high tides, if the winds aren't too hard, uh, strong, top water plugs, uh, even quarter or half ounce gold spoons work real well. And then, of course, you can chum baits around and get them fired up and fish them with live baits and free lines that way. Emerson Point, Rattlesnake Key, and then down south in Lemon Bay around the Mangrove Islands just north of Stump Pass. My last photo tonight is of Captain Will Osborne, a uh, client with a big jumbo redfish he caught back in the mangroves in cortez florida all right bud thank you so much we're gonna go ahead and take a look at the daiquiri deck hot spots from the central west region he says in short <coughs> lots of juvenile tarpon in the back of gasparilla sound feeding on small baits try stick shads or mirrodines in a chartreuse pattern or a dark colored fly has been the bait of choice and then offshore catch and release gag grouper bite has been good 90 feet over the ledges and hard bottom areas from Venice north to Anna Maria. Live pin fish and grunts on the standard bottom rig have been the best bait. All right, now in the front runner boats northeast region, the story is a little different than the west coast with prime king time among us, right, Tommy? That's right, Bree. We love our kingfish this time of year, and it's, you picked a great time to talk about them because we're kind of right in the heart of kingfish season here in the front runner boats northeast region. You know, kingfish, they're, they're a summertime staple for us here. When things get boiling hot outside like it's been over the last month or so, you know, one cool thing is sometimes you can get a little reprieve from that heat by trolling for kingfish along the beach and offshore because you're moving around a little bit. Now, the kingfish have been a little hit or miss along the beaches this year. The bait, namely the pogies, they've been very sparse this season, to say the least. Um, some days where, you know, usually it's a pretty cut and dry process of getting out there, netting the pogies along the beach and trolling uh, with them right in the same area. That's been tough on most days, but the good news is there has been some bait pods showing up. They've been very scattered, um, but they're a little bit better than they have been over the last couple of weeks. And hopefully after the storm went through, maybe that'll stir some things up like you guys were talking about and maybe some more bait will show up. Now this time of year as we head into August, we typically get a good push of kingfish on the beach as we get close to the full and new moons, and those bigger fish come in shallower to spawn. Now, if you're fishing the beach, you're going to want to typically be in about 30 to 50 feet of water, uh, and you try to keep your speed as you're trolling about as slow as you can go. Now, the beach kingfish tend to be on the bigger side, and over the past couple of weeks, we've had some tournaments, and there's been some big kingfish in that 30-pound range being caught. There's also a handful of 40s, and I think even a 50 I saw as well. Now, the nearshore and offshore reefs and wrecks have been holding good numbers of kingfish, uh, slow trolling, both live and dead bait. 
you could pull spoons or some of those lip plugs that uh, Jeff was talking about that dive down. Those have all been affected out there on those reefs. Most of those fish have been in that 10 to 20 pound range. Now it's also, like I was talking about Kingfish tournament season and the King of the Beach tournament was uh, held last weekend. Our buddies in Front Runner are big sponsors of that tournament and there was some monsters caught. I've got a picture of one of them here. Captain Richard Bloom from Northeast Florida Fishing Charter sent me the picture of himself along with Todd Boytek holding one of their fish. They landed them in first place aggregate. I think it was second place overall. I don't have enough time to tell the whole story about, but they had a great day. They made a last minute gut call to catch that fish. And Rick, I'm sure you know, sometimes in those tournaments, you gotta go with your gut. And That's it worked it. out for those guys. It sure did. Good job, Let's guys. All right, now moving to mangrove snapper, you know, there's been, or really there hasn't been a whole lot of offshore fishing this week with the storm passing by, but the guys tell me that the snapper bite, the mangoes, the muttons, and the bee liners should all be good coming off the new moon we just had and leading up to the next full moon. The mangrove snappers in particular should still be schooled up offshore anywhere from about 120 to 140 feet. And like always, most of those seasoned pros out there, they're gonna be chumming those fish up, then they're gonna free line a small chunk of bait back to those fish, you know, you can downsize your uh, leader and your hook a little bit when you're doing that as well. Now moving inshore, there's been a great trout bite happening the past couple of weeks throughout the region, and especially at night around the dock lights and during those first and last hours of daylight. I spoke to my buddy, Captain Buzz Brandon. He tells me he's been running some night trips, which is also nice, kind of beats the heat, and he's targeting the dock, uh, the dock lights, both along the St. Johns River near Mayport and along the ICW towards Palm Valley. Now, Captain Buzz says he's tossing some fish bites, jerk baits on a very light weedless hook up current of those lights, letting it just kind of drift through there. He's catching multiple fish on just about every light. Now, Buzz also said there's a few snook and some redfish mixed in there under the lights as well. A lot of fun. Now, my clients have had a great trout bite tossing up that Berkeley Jaywalker 120 topwater plug right as the sun has been coming up. Man, I've been getting up early a lot lately. Now, we've just been targeting the small runouts along the ICW on that last bout going tide. Those small mullet, the little ones that are around right now, they've been stacked up at those little drains. And the trout, along with the reds and the flounder, have been there as well. And I've got a trout picture here. This is my man Jordan with a nice gator trout that he caught with me recently in the north end of St. Augustine. Now moving on to redfish. Man, you know, you guys were talking about you kind of never know what's going to happen after a storm. You get the wind and the rain. But man, the redfish bite continues to be great this week. We had a great bite today. Just like I mentioned before, the ICW has been a hot spot for the Reds on the early morning low tide. They've been feeding on those schools of finger mullet, tons of finger mullet around right now. If you have a skinny water boat or even a kayak or a paddle board, it's a great time to sneak into some super skinny water. I've seen quite a few redfish just snaking around and sub six, uh, six inches of water this week. Toss the saltwater assassin paddle tail, rig it on a really light saltwater assassin weedless hook great way to um, have a good uh, lure to cast those backing fish. They've been very cooperative if you present it the right way. And they've also been eating those little live mullets really well um, if your live bait is your thing. Just net some of those mullet, put them in those areas where the mullet is stacked up. The reds are in there waiting for an easy snack. And I got one last photo here. My brother, Captain Todd Derringer, he sent me this picture of his clients, Richie and Henry, with their nice red fish they caught using a live finger mullet. How about those kids? They look like they're stuck, don't they? Yeah, I love seeing the smiles. Thank you for all the pictures this week. Tommy, we're gonna go ahead and take a look at the strike zone northeast hotspots from the front runner northeast region. He says, inshore redfish and trout on the top water plugs and or live finger mullet along the ICW on the early morning low tide. Mm -hmm. Kingfish offshore on the near shore reefs throughout the entire region. Bree, hey, Summertime smiles. I yeah, love it. Yeah, man. How about give me a thumbs up on uh, the last two? Thumbs up on that thumbs photo. <laughs> we'll All right. get into that later. Yeah. It's the perfect time to cruise <laughs> on in and purchase a brand new Yamaha during Yamaha's Cruise <laughs> Through Summer Sales event. From now until <laughs> August 30th, eligible new Yamaha 450 to 425 HP outboards include up to seven years of coverage protection. 350 to 30 horsepower outboards come with up to five years, and all new Yamaha portables include up to $250 in dealer credit. Credits. For more information, visit your local Yamaha dealer today. But next, we're getting wired for the Fish Bites Trading Post Rigs and Techniques at the CCA Workbench with Dave Farrell. Dave! Yeah, we got Rick got brought his own on. box in. So we got, we got a little sneak peek into Murphy's box. Ooh, yeah. that's always a good thing. All right, and then we're getting schooled up for the Real Legends Central East Region with Captain Jim Ross. We'll be right back.
The Florida Insider Fishing Report is brought to you by Yamaha. Reliability starts here. Fenwick. Feel everything. Sirius XM Marine. Weather. Fish mapping. Entertainment. Penn. Let the battle begin. Casa Vieja Lodge. Five-star angling in beautiful Guatemala. Berkeley Prospect Chrome. Fish Bites Trading Post, the first choice of First Coast Anglers. Castaway Coffee, one taste and you'll be hooked. And Daiquiri Deck, food, drinks, friends. Well, we're here at the CCA Workbench. It's time for the Trading Post, uh, Fish Bites Trading Post, Rigs and Techniques, you know, Dave. Yes, sir. And we're talking kingfish this week. Yeah, you know, kingfish is a great offshore fish to target. Um, there's relatively uh, prolific and you don't have to really go off shore that far to catch them sometimes, especially here in the summertime. Right. Uh, like Tommy was saying, usually in, on the East Coast, when the pogies are right on the beach, the biggest kingfish will be caught right on the beach. I mean, you know, they're really, really big ones. Um, we actually catch smaller ones offshore, which is, you know, kind of rare for an offshore fish. Usually the bigger ones are further off. Right. But during the summertime, those big kings are, are patrolling those pogey pods and uh, we'll get right up on the beach and we, we catch some great big ones in there. Um, you know, I like to use a live bait. We're going to start, I got a live bait rig there with that wire. You know, I always want to catch at least one king mackerel for the day. Um, so if I stop to bottom fish, the first fish that comes up, if it's not a keeper, it goes on a, on a rig. It goes on a wire rig. Uh, it doesn't matter what it is. It can be, you know, anything that's, that's not illegal right. that I can put out. Right. And, you know, blue runners are great. Uh, any of the, you know, big any, lady fish, big lady fish uh, uh, a mango, you know, snapper, any a mingo snapper, a grunt. Anything will go out on a on a on a floating line, you know, right. a flat line. Right. And you know, I make I, this one here is made for uh, a, a bigger fish. a ribbon fish or a big blue runner or something right. like that. The bigger bait you use, the bigger kingfish you use, you'll usually catch. And you, you, we all, I have to use wire um, because we have a lot of kingfish where I live. Uh, if I'm fishing for dolphin and wahoo, we got to have wire. Right. You know, I don't have to have it for the dolphin, but there's enough wahoos and kingfish around that I have to have it all the time. I like to use a regular pinfish rig, as you you know, right. with an island lure. Uh, if if I'm pulling that with a ballyhoo, uh, if my tails start disappearing, then I'll get a treble hook and I'll put a stinger rig on there with another little section of wire, a number one eagle claw uh, treble hook. But just 4X. A 4X one, or, you know, it doesn't, you know, it, the kingfish that I'm catching usually aren't really testing my hooks that much, and that right. treble hook, you know, is really strong enough because I'm not using that much drag. I'm using smaller equipment, so, you know, those work fine. And I like to use a downrigger a lot when I'm targeting kingfish. You can put anything behind that. This planer? Yeah, the, uh, I mean a planer. Uh, a, a, a sea witch with a ballyhoo in it. That pin rig we were talking about with a ballyhoo behind it, uh, just a plain ballyhoo will work on there, and also any of your trolling plugs, you know, like that that swimmer. Right the there. magic swimmer yeah. with a planer, man, you don't miss anything. Yeah, that Berkeley magic swimmer. It's got a jointed body, and you don't have to you don't have to go that fast when you're targeting kingfish. Four to six knots is right. plenty fast enough, and that thing really, really swims when it's going slow. Right. So you don't really have to go fast with that. And you, you look on there, they got really giant hooks on there, really strong hardware. Right. It's not going to come apart, uh, which is a really good thing. And we also have the uh, the Max Stick here, the Speed Runner. If you want to go up a little faster, you can control you know that thing up to nine knots, and uh, you know. It's got 6X hooks on it. And it's always good to have these single hooks on there when you're targeting the, the kingfish because they can't use them as leverage. And a kingfish mouth is much like a wahoo's mouth. It's really hard to get a hook in there. Right. And you might miss a few when you're pulling these big plugs, but as long as you keep getting bit, just hang in there and one of them's gonna get hung up. And you know? some dudes, you know, they wanna troll a little slower with a lot of vibration, Dave, so then right. they could use 
That's the, the that's the that's the Berkeley. The deep diver. I mean the, the, the deep diver there as well. Savage, savage actually. Uh, the, the Mac stick that dives. It's got a big lip on it. Some of those will go 20, 30 feet deep. Correct. It's got a really nice super glow finish on it. They like shiny things, so you know colors. You know really attract them. I usually put some sort of color on any on any bait that I have out there. What rod, Dave? Well, uh, a nice long rod with a soft tip like this Carnage Three here. Right. You you want to have a a, a softer tip again because of that kingfish's mouth. They like to run, run, run and come back at you. So a high speed pen fathom two reel w works really well. You know, 20 pound test line, 30 pound test line. You really don't have to go that heavy because you know, they, they really are, are really good for probably one really good run and then and then you can reel them back to the boat pretty easy. <clears throat> yeah. So, you know, if you're efficient seven, eight pounds of drag on there, you should be plenty to catch most kingfish that you're gonna run into. Good job over here tonight. But, yeah, just, yeah, just make sure you have a nice That's soft fair. tip, especially if you're using the live bait with the treble hooks. Exactly, you wanna see that. Yeah. All right, Bree. Lots of good tips, gentlemen. Yes, ma'am. I'm liking it. All right, in the Real Legends Central East region, we're trolling for some holy mackerel with Captain Jim Ross. Jim, we're getting the smoker ready, just so you know. I, well, you better because I, the Real Legends region has some big kingfish, especially in June, July, and August. And there's nothing that anglers around here in the Real Legends region like more than to slow troll live baits along the beaches or over our shore reefs and wrecks to be able to catch some of those big smokers. Um, you know, most of the time we're using live pogies or pilchards or, you know, something like that. That's, that seems to be the best way to go about getting those things to bite. But like Dave and Rick were just talking about, uh, lip diving plugs and, and plugs behind a planer can be extremely effective. One of the things that I've found with plugs is that if you downsize your plug when the bite gets tough, you start picking those bites back up and getting better fish again and more consistent bites. Uh, our average king mackerel basically is running about 20 pounds this time of year. I've got a picture here with uh, my son Justin and one of his uh, customers. They were out the other day and had some had actually a really good day and a couple of nice fish there uh, with, that, uh, with that picture. And then my second species is scamp grouper. And you know, we don't talk about scamps a whole lot, but I'll tell you, the scamp grouper are showing up really good numbers this past few weeks. Anglers in this region are targeting them in 180 to about uh, 240, 250 feet of water. And uh, you know, also on those reefs, but also on the larger wrecks, they're also coming off of them as well. Live croakers, grunts, blue runners, they all make fantastic baits or plugs. If you don't have live baits, you can use a plug of those, you know, cut the head and tail off and just use the center. And, uh, you know, get those fish off the bottom quickly so that they don't get sharked. Most of our scamps are running eight to 16 pounds. And I've got a picture here, uh, Jonathan Sorensen of Cocoa Beach, uh, got a nice little fat scamp that he brought home the other day. Nice. Tell us about mangrove the inshore. snapper swinging inshore. Mangroves, you know, we normally talk about these offshore because they're an offshore species most of the year. Uh, when, when we're talking about keeper sized fish, but right now, the hard structures like causeway bridge pilings, docks, all of the rock jetties here this week, and even some rocky areas in the ICW channel near Edgewater and also around the Hallover Canal have been hanging. There's been plenty of mangrove snapper that are good, big mangrove snapper hanging around them. Live shrimp or small live pilchards or small, very, very small fingerling mullet on a one eighth to one quarter ounce jig head make great snapper baits. And remember, with the snapper, you gotta let that thing sit there for a second because what they're gonna do is they're gonna hit it a couple of times to kill it. So you may feel a tap or even a double tap and then that third bite is actually the real bite when they eat the bait. Don't set the hook too soon because you're gonna miss a lot of the bigger fish if you do that. Most of our fish are running 10 to 15 inches right now if you're using some of those larger baits in those areas I mentioned. Got a picture of one we caught here in Hallover Canal the other day. And you know, right at that 12 inch range is what you're gonna see for your average fish. Some of them are gonna push 14 and 15 inches though. Nice. And then our last species is tarpon. <laughs> tarpon have been really good inside the lagoon system this year. My son 
uh, Captain Justin Ross has been targeting them near Cocoa Beach and also in the Indian River near Cocoa. And like Jeff was saying earlier, look for the fry bait, look for those little glass minnows and sizzle baits because that's where you're gonna find these fish. They're feeding on those little teeny tiny baits right now. They're striking greenies, pilchards, and small fingerling mullet. So you're gonna have to downsize your rigs. Go down to a 40 pound or even a 50 pound uh, fluorocarbon leader and drop down to a four aught or maybe a five aught size circle hook, but a four aught is about as big as you wanna go right now. Most of these tarpon are running 40 to about 100 pounds. And I've got a picture here of Justin uh, leadering one the other day, uh, right there, almost at Doc's bait house, to be honest with you, right there at the 520 Causeway really nice sized fish for for this time of the year so if you guys and gals like tarpon you don't have to go offshore to get it looks like your boy's doing a great job carrying yes, the carrying oh, yeah. the torch good job there daddy <laughs> all right we're gonna go ahead and get a, you too a, daddy get a, yeah get a look at the rodan marine system hot spots he says inshore to speckle trout on the deeper edges of the flats in the mosquito lagoon use live pig fish or saltwater four inch uh, ash and sea shad and pilchard houdini or green hornet colored patterns and then offshore scamp groupers on the high relief structure and 150 to 250 feet of water use live or cut baits on a 10 to 12 foot leader you and jim are just raising up some respectable captains i must say and until Ridge, until leo Justin. gets old enough until Leo gets old enough. Then Ridge Lord, can show Leo. help me. All right, well, kingfish can be caught just about anywhere in the coastal waters of Florida this time of year. But did you know that catching a legal minimum size kingfish could land you a new Yamaha motor? Yep, in the CCA Florida Star competition presented by Yamaha, AFCO offers as first place a Yamaha 250. And it's not the biggest fish. Just enter any legal minimum size kingfish and you have a shot at winning. But remember that any fish caught anywhere in Florida can earn anglers a shot at winning their share of $500,000 in prizes and scholarships. New boat, motor, and trailer packages from Contender, Deck Cat, Spider, Micro Draft Skiff, Carolina Skiff, and Infinity Trailers, or even a Can-Am Sea-Doo package. But you have to be registered and a CCA member. The star competition ends September 2nd, so get registered today at ccaflstar.com. That is sneaking up. Yep. Oh my goodness. The Kings are ruling the Sea Sucker Panhandle region when we come back. And then the Discover Crystal River Northwest region captain Jeff Hageman is breaking down our weekend. So stay hooked and we will be right back. The Florida Insider Fishing Report is brought to you by Power Pole, Total Boat Control, Berkeley, Your Fish, Our Science. Bahio, blue light blocking, radically clear polarized fishing sunglasses. Scoozy Shoes, the captain's choice for premium lightweight comfort. Sea Sucker, easy on, easy off, incredibly strong. Pen, let the battle begin. Kubota, together we do more. And the International Order of T. Roosevelt, protect your right to fish. Welcome back. To be graced by a king in the Sea Sucker Panhandle region can be quite the honor. So let's find out why with Captain Pat Deneen, shall we? Hey, Bree, I tell you what, for years, kingfish were the bread and butter fish for four hour charters. But the last few seasons, they've been kind of hit or miss with people wondering where all the kings gone. Uh, this summer, we've had some really good kingfish in May and June. And as soon as they thought they were back, they moved on. But now they're back again. Lately, there's been uh, quite a few being caught and a few big ones, the boat up out of Destin. They had a really nice smoker, you know, this past week. Uh, the king mackerels, are, they're being caught while fly lining, while live bait down current, while bottom fishing, or by slow trolling live bait. And you're gonna find the kings over some structure or around some, some bait. Cigar minnows and herrings are the bait of choice on a stinger rig, which is also known as a ha-ha rig. And, you know, they get that trail and hook and ha-ha, gotcha. But you can also troll lip plugs and spoons. The kings stay in our area through October and November with some of the biggest ones showing up in the fall. And there's a nice kingfish uh, photo, uh, one that was caught early, earlier this week and early morning out of Destin, bump trolling cigar minnows over the broken bottom in 90 feet of water. So, they, I mean, they like I say, they've been kind of here, here today, gone tomorrow, and then back again. But what is not here today and gone tomorrow are the trigger fish. Uh, they're one of the tastiest fish out there. They opened for harvest again on August 1st, and they're being, being caught in good numbers. 
Uh, they're going to be high in the water over structure and 60 plus feet of water. Mostly fish with a two hook chicken rig baited with cut squid or minnows. You want to use a small two or three aught circle hook. Triggers are notorious bait stealers and that small hook fits nicely into, the, into their mouth. But if you're going to use larger hooks, they're just going to peck the bait off the hook and you're going to come back with clean hooks every time. But fish baits also make a great bait for the triggers. They stay on the hook really well and they're not messy at all. And the triggers really like to eat them. Uh, the trigger fish are running up to six or eight pounds and be sure to save the throats. It's some of the tastiest meat on, on a trigger fish. So you get two fillets and a throat, it's golden. Uh, moving inshore, big and small redfish are being caught in all the bay systems. There are a lot of red minnows in our bays, basically little, small, herring looking black baits, very small. And the bull redfish are keen on them in the deeper bay areas and around the bay ridges. Open water, look for the birds or keep an eye on your sounder and side scan to, to locate the baits. A paddle tail swim bait and a lip plug is great. When you're marking fish deep, top waters like the Jaywalker work great when the reds have the minnows push up to the top. The smaller slot fish are going to be along the shorelines, uh, the grassy shorelines, the sandy potholes on the grass flats and hanging around residential docks. Pay particular attention to docks in generally shallow areas that have a decent sized boat on a lift. There's usually going to be a deeper hole around the lift, lift and the fish like to lay up in that hole uh, and in the shade of the dock. Live baits under a float, gold spoons, and a bass assassin sea shad are all great baits for targeting those slot redfish around the dock. And then finally inshore, the black tip sharks have been very numerous along the beaches and in the bays, particularly St. Joe Bay and St. Andrews Bay. In St. Joe Bay, the point on the Cape is a great place to find them as well as the deep water near the old paper mill site. Uh, and that you're going to fish there, you're going to get tied on a black tip. Ladyfish, either whole, butterfly, or chunked, is fish on the bottom are fantastic baits for these sharks. You want to use a circle hook and obviously a wire leader. Most of the black tips are 15 to 30 pounds, so you can get by with a medium heavy spinning tackle or a light conventional tackle. And they're great fun and also take care of them. They're good on, they're good on the table. All right, Pat, thank you so much. We're going to go ahead and take a look at the hot spots from the Panhandle Sea Sucker region. He says in shore, the halfway bridge, <coughs> it's been on fire with big redfish regardless of the tide. Free line cigar minnows, herrings, pinfish, or croakers around the pylons on the up current side, Bree, and then offshore, vermilion snappers and trigger fish on cut bait. The bigger fish are coming from the deeper water over natural bottom. Trigger fish, they trigger me. <laughs> Oh boy. Oh boy. We'll talk about that story later. We're patiently waiting for the kingfish <laughs> magic in the Discover Crystal River Northwest region. So Hag, let's hear what that magic is. Kingfish can be found throughout my entire region, uh, mm. from inside Tampa Bay and the shipping channel to right off the beach out to 100 feet of water. Depending on the water temp uh, and the bait, the magic water temp seems to be that 68 to 75 degree water. That's when we get the majority of our kingfish in full force. We have a spring and a fall run. Uh, most of the time the kingfish are going to be over those artificial reefs, wrecks, any kind of hard bottom that holds bait. And uh, as far as baits go, threadfin herring, blue runners are some of the favorite live baits for slow trolling around those reefs and wrecks in hard bottom areas. Uh, big lip plugs, spoons are also favorite artificials to be fast trolling with and is very effective. Another way you can anchor up ahead of any kind of structure, um, whether it be that hard bottom or a wreck, chum heavily with some live and some cut bait, get that smell out, put a chum bag out and bring them right to the back of your boat. As far as uh, gear goes, uh, medium heavy spinning outfit, weighing with a 20 pound braid or conventional, good smooth drag is a must and a high gear ratio. They're really, really fast fish and they can turn around and run right back at the boat at you, so you need something fast to keep up with them. So smooth drag and fast gear ratios are a must. As far as rigs go, number four to number seven haywire to help you get cutoffs is uh, what you want to do. And also a little trick with king fishing, start your drag off a little light when they start going. That'll keep from uh, getting those short strikes and uh, bump your drag up as the fish makes its first run. Staying offshore, Captain Rob Davenport of Big Nasty Charters out of St. Pete reports a good red snapper bite right now. Your bigger red snapper can be found out 170, 250 feet of water. Look for them a little higher on the water column. 
the bigger fish will always be on top of the red snapper sna stacks out there when you're looking down your bottom sheet and you can adjust your bait accordingly. Uh, the knocker rig has been the rig of choice, 60 to 80 pound fluorocarbon leader, six to eight aught via, uh, excuse me, throw car circle hook and eight to 10 ounces of lead. Live bait has been his first choice and he's also using some slow bitch jigs and they're working pretty good as well. Got a nice West Coast red snapper photo from Big Nasty. There you go. <laughs> All right, what else you got? Uh, Captain Jim Pollard, Big Daddy Sports Fishing, reports good snook by right now. Captain Jim has been finding the snook moving out around the mangrove edges early in the morning hours. After it gets hot, and they're moving up underneath those mangrove edges and getting in the shadows there. So live pilchards, they work from five feet to six feet of 25 pound fluorocarbon leader with a two car, two aught throw car circle hook has been his beta choice and setup. Moving up the coast a little bit, Captain Jim Huddleston out of Ozona reports a good snook bite in his region as well. Uh, around the beaches and passes has been his go-to spots. Both incoming and outgoing tides have been working well. Free lining or weighted sardines and pinfish have been his go-to baits. Three out, four out trocar circle hook, depending on size bait you're using, has been his uh, hook of choice. And three to six feet of 25 to 30 pound fluorocarbon leader. And the fish right now are ranging anywhere. From 25 to 29 inches and I got a snook photo here a nice west coast snook very nice there you go all right hag well thank you so got much one more to go yep tell me that about it John John Lane of JD Charters at Appalachia Color reports the bull red fish bite is back to go back right now he's catching them in the passes using mullet and shrimp on the top and bottom of the tide with just enough lead to get the bait down in the current and got a beautiful photo of a nice Apalachicola redfish caught aboard JB Charters. Yeah, man, two happy anglers looking good. All right, we're gonna go ahead and take a look at the Ozella Key Marina hotspots from the Discover Crystal River Northwest region. He says, in shore, redfish on the top of the tide in the beginning of the outgoing using live and cut bait. And then if you wanna go mangrove snapper fishing, offshore, you're gonna go at uh, on the, all the high relief structures in 20 to 70 feet of water, tail hook shrimp or sardines have been the bait of choice for them snappers. Snappers, well, Rick, since we are talking about Ozello Keys Marina, we're in the Discover Crystal River Northwest region. Hag was there. This past weekend, we all took a trip to the plantation in on Crystal River, and we went scalloping. Yes, we did. My favorite trip of the year. You know, we, we had Look at them scallops. Look at Ooh. that. We had 70 <laughs> of our friends, family. Our family. We brought kids, we brought cousins, we brought, I mean, just you name it. Some we of the, our media there. crew. Yeah, man. Yeah. The thing that's so cool about going up there, Bree, is the clarity of the water and how shallow the scalloping can be. And, yeah. you know, I'm not a big get in the water kind of guy, but up there, I love the fact that I can get in. And feel comfortable. Yeah, feel comfortable and There's looking for two. those scallops and those babies catching them. Oh yeah, that was amazing. If Mia and Leah can do it, two and a six-year-old, anybody can do it. Yeah, it's really it's so fun. fun. And and to be hosted by the people at the plantation at, at Crystal River, it's just so awesome. It's, great pool, great yeah. food. It just guys, you just gotta go do it. Try it sometime. Go do it. Book for next year. It's such a beautiful place to be in Florida and a perfect family vacation. It sure is. Absolutely. All right. Well, Dave Farrell is reigning over at the CCA workbench for Taco Marine New Products. Dave, it's looking pretty spiffy over here. What you got? We we got a whole bunch of interesting things. We got some new colors. We got some new tools. And uh, we got a really cool rod bite. I love it. Well, and then we're seeing what the weekend is bringing in the Fish Bites East region when we come back. The Florida Insider Fishing Report is brought to you by Alta Equipment Company, where uptime matters. Ameritrail, load, launch, relax. Abyss Battery, power your pursuit. Rodan, set it, forget it, catch more fish. Discover Crystal River, Florida. Bass Assassin and Saltwater Assassin. Best lures, period. Black Oak LED. Never be left in the dark. And Maverick Boat Group. Makers of premium boat brands Maverick, Hughes, Pathfinder, and Cobia. 
Well, we're here again at the CCA workbench. Time for the Taco Marine new products. And Dave, looks like we got some cool stuff tonight. Yeah, we do. They're not, we don't have a lot of big stuff. We got some cool little stuff. We're gonna start over there with the Bass Assassin, the new colors and the four inch FW Elite Shiner. Uh, that one's called the Iridescent. Look and how clear it, it is. Yeah, it's very nice. Translucent. Yep, and the other one's called the Crush Shad. Uh, like a green color with a with little sparklies in it there. Yeah, let me turn it around for old Doug so he can zoom in there. Yeah, it's pretty cool. Those baits were originally designed to run on an Alabama rig, you know, you, with a bunch of on a jig head, but they're just so great. They work on anything really. They're uh, really soft plastic, so it works great on a ball jig as a drop shot bait or as a trailer on a spinner bait even. Uh, just an unbelievable swimming action. They got that medium sized tail and combined with that really soft plastic. It really kicks really, really hard. And uh, it's just, they're just really good little baits. I like those little small baits. Everything eats them from big fish to even smaller fish. So you're usually gonna get some action when you're pulling something like that. They have a new 3.0 swim hook too, Bass Assassin does, that those things fit perfectly on. And uh, they're just really cool little baits. And weedless, it's a killer. Yeah, yeah, it's a exactly, killer. exactly. All right, where do we go to find it? Bassassassin.com. All right. Next, we saw this at the ICAST show. This is called the Hidden T Ultimate Fighting Butt. And what this does, it allows you to, you know, battle a hard fighting fish without having to go looking for a gimbal or a... I uh, got the gimbal here. Yeah, without having to go looking for something because it just pops and it makes that nice little T so that you can fight a fish, you know, without having to jam that gimbal into your groin or your belly and uh, it disperses the pressure over that area. And, uh, you know, you can you can buy these and, and put them on an existing rod. If you cut off the tip and, and pull, peel off the... Uh, the foam, they'll, they have a, a guide online there at their website that'll show you which ones you can do that with, or they'll sell you the rod with it on there already. And uh, you know, if you're building a rod, if you're a rod builder, this is a perfect thing if you want this kind of thing to put on there. Uh, it's called the Hidden T, and it's uh, just a really simple little device that uh, is pretty cool. And you know, you go to hiddenteaproducts.com to find out all about that, the size chart and everything. Perfect. Next, we have the Boomerang Tool. This is the Saltwater Big Snip. You know, I, I've been using the little ones forever. I love these things. I just love to have them. They're very, very handy. And that Big Snip, well, it's, it's a fishing line cutter, 420 stainless steel, cuts 150 pound braid, cuts 200 pound mon 250 pound mono, uh, attaches to your belt so it's always there. Um, it's got a really nice little uh, uh, carbiner on there that's made out of hard plastic that will not rust and a uh, built-in tether that's 36 inches long and it's made from military grade type 2 nylon uh, fiber cord and it's got a really it's got a locking blade so that when you yeah, close it yeah. uh, you can cl click it open and close so you won't be tearing holes in your pockets if you want to put it in your pocket yep. and uh, you know if you're using it in, in salt water just make sure you give it a good rinse in fresh water after you use it maybe spray it with some WD-40 or whatever and it'll last forever. Where are we going to get it? Boomerangtool.com to get those. Next we have a battery tender trolling motor plug. This is a onboard connector really for any DC to DC connection. You know, it's ma made primarily for trolling motors, but you can use it for any DC to DC connector on your boat. And uh, especially one that you want if you have something that you want to remove or take off. And uh, as you know, it's only seven ounces. It's small, two pin connector. Uh, it's rated up to 80 amps continuous, so you can put a big battery on there and not have to worry about your power source blowing up your, uh, your whatever you got on the other end of it. Corrosion resistant stainless steel uh, with silver plated copper contacts, just really high end, you know, really nice stuff. That's why they can put a five year warranty on it for make. Five year warranty. Yeah, yeah. That's what I'm talking right. about screw, right there. Uh, that screw and lock device that you keep going through that really allows you to, to, to mount and take off if you want. Comes with a plug, you know, once you take it off, you can put the plug on there to keep the water out of it. I it's got a vibration that. resistant. Uh, as well, that lock is vibration resistant. So, um, and it comes with everything you need to install it, even with another L-shaped plug, if you if the size, if that one there doesn't work for you. So where do we go to find it, Dave? Battery, batterytender.com. All right, I'm going to 
tender into another region. <laughs> Why not? Oh wow, you're tender into another region. That's, eh? I don't know if that's the exact well, not word, but quite we'll leave yet. It. We'll leave it. Go. Richard. Well, we're tendering somewhere. All right, there's still time to sign up and join us right here in our Miami studios next week for the Redfish Live Studio Audience Show. So scan that QR code or sign up at our website and we'll see you soon. It's a lot of fun. We also do some giveaways during the commercial breaks, which they're pretty good too. So uh, make sure you sign on up and we'll see you next week. If you're looking for the Kings and the Fish Bites East region, make sure you keep an eye out for bait schools being harassed or be prepared to work the reefs. Hi, Mike. Hey, Bray. You know, that's basically it when chasing Kings in my region in the summertime. It's really based on the bait school. So wherever you find the bait, you're going to find the fish. And the Kings are most active, it seems, like early morning and then mid-afternoon. But you can catch them any time of day and even after dark, uh, particularly on the full moon, which is coming up in another week. Right now, the fish are spread throughout the region, uh, but there's good concentrations of fish on the northern end of my region and 60 to 80 feet of water from like the 12A buoy off St. Lucie County all the way up to Fort Pierce Inlet and also uh, up off Vero around Bethel Shoals. And then in the afternoons or when we have a southwest wind, there's been uh, big fish on the beach around the bait schools in the Vero Cove and also in Stewart around the House of Refuge. You can target the kings with anything from trolled ballyhoo or ribbon fish uh, to any live baits like a sardine, a thread fin, a pilchard or a goggle eye. Put them out on an R&R &R wire rig or a number four wire stinger rig. Uh, this time of year, a lot of anglers like to drift and fish dead sardines on that triple hook monofilament palm beach rig. Average kingfish in my region is going to be, you know, 10 to 20 pounds, but we get them up to about 40 pounds this time of year. I got a photo that Captain Jonathan Earhart sent me, uh, shot one of a kingfish one of his anglers caught. They got that on the sand pile off Stewart, and that fish ate a live sardine. The other bite we got going, the summer sailfish bite, it won't quit. It ramped up again this week. The fish are spread out throughout the region. There seems to be good concentration of fish in 60 to 80 feet of water off the Black Condo in St. Lucie County, and also out in 100 to 150 feet of water off St. Lucie Inlet. The key is to find, find the schools of juvenile flying fish. Some days are in shallower, some days are deeper. The sails seem to be really hanging around those flying fish, looking for that easy meal. You can target them by trolling ballyhoo with a blue and white or a pink skirt. But the boats that are really catching, you know, a lot of sails are, are all fishing live pilchers or thread fins, either, you know, slow trolled or power drifted out with kites. Average sailfish in my region right now is gonna be 30 to 50 pounds. And Captain Eric Davis of Vero Beach sent me this shot of a sailfish that they caught off Fort Pierce recently. That fish came out of 135 feet of water on a live thread fish. Awesome. Nice. That's a cool photo. All right, what else you got this week, Mike? Well, the catch and release snook action has been very consistent, really in all the inlets of my region, uh, as well as on the beach in places like the Hope Sound Wildlife Refuge, Walton Rocks in St. Lucie County, and South Beach, south of Fort Pierce Inlet. Uh, there's also been a good nighttime bite going on all the bridges. Um, but particularly the 25 cent bridge on the Indian River and North Bridge on the Indian River and the 17th bridge up in Vero Beach and uh, 17th Street Bridge, as well as the Lake Worth and Juno Piers have pretty good good uh, bites going at night. Uh, lures and flies are working in low light, so early and late in the day, you want to use them. Uh, a saltwater assassin, copper juice or green hornet colored sea shad is going to be your top artificial to throw on the beaches and around the inlets. For bait, live croakers, thread fins, filters, or sardines are going to work at the inlets. Uh, the Artemis Shad and topwater plugs, that's what's working around the bridges at night. Average snook is 8 to 18 pounds. Captain John Young of Port St. Lucie, he sent me this shot of Michael from Philadelphia, one of his clients, with his first snook, and that fish ate a live croaker. <laughs> now, the other thing we got going inside, the resident tarpon bite's been very consistent around the bridges of the St. Lucie River and in all the inlets. And that's been a nighttime bite. Uh, for the daytime uh, bite, the action has been up in the Loxahatchee River around the Boy Scout camp and, and the crossroads area of Stewart. And then with all the rain we've had this weekend, uh, the bites also picked up around the spillways like the C-23 and C-24 and the St. Lucie Locks. Target to fish at night, uh, the nighttime fish with live mullet or menhaden, put them out on a 60 pound fluorocarbon leader and 70 circle hook for the daytime fish, a live or dead mullet, as well as a Houdini colored 
saltwater assassin four and sea shad. Average tarp in my region is going to be 30 to 80 pounds. And uh, I got a photo that Captain Cody Rubner sent me. Uh, he said he got this shot. Uh, this tarpon was one of his clients off Bathtub Beach recently, and that fish ate a live mullet. It sure did. All right, let's go bass fishing. What do you got this week, Bob? Yeah, you know, all that rain we've had uh, over the weekend and all and early into this week really dropped the water temperatures on the Kissimmee Toho chain. That's really fired up the dawn bass bite for schooling fish. Those fish are, are all feeding on juvenile shad and they're working the hydrilla beds out in open water areas of both lakes. Uh, so you want to start your day throwing small top water plugs or soft plastics, you know, like a, uh, a bass assassin vapor shad or, or a split tail shad or an elite shiner, uh, that albino halo color or really any of the shad colors is going to work for that, that bite. And that bite goes until about 8 a.m. And then it's time to, to work the open water areas uh, that the hydrilla mats that are out in the open water. So Carolina rig, green pumpkin twitch worm, or you can pitch to the holes in the grass in places like Brahma Island uh, with that big boy special colored fat job, rig it Senko style with very little weight and just twitch it, let it sink a little bit and you'll get some of those bigger bass. You can also slow troll live shiners along the edges of the hydrilla until you get a bite then work that same area with the shiners until you rack up the numbers. It, it sounds like it's a 20 to 30 fish morning on, on Toho Kissimmee right now. Average bass, one to three pounds. Sounds like the East region's on fire, bud. Yeah, we got we got some good bites going. All right, man. Thank you so much for all your hard work this week. It's time for the TNH Marine hotspots from the East region. Mike says, inshore tarpon and snook at the Roosevelt Bridge. On the St. Lucie River, use live mullet, saltwater assassin, Artemis shad, and swimming plugs to catch those guys. And if you want to go offshore, guys, mutton snappers on the sand pile off St. Lucie Inlet at night. Pilchard sardines and cigar minos on a 5-0 circle is going to get them. All right, sounds good. Folks, we're going to keep reminding you of the Shoreline Showdown Surf Fishing Tournament Series presented by Fish Bites. Four tournaments, one championship, and over $75,000 in guaranteed payouts, plus fishing for a chance to qualify to compete for the title of the Ultimate Surf Angler. We are two down with two more to go. So for more information, scan that QR code or visit shorelineshowdown.com. All right, it's looking like a great weekend to be on the water in the talk Uchi Keys and Casa Vieja Lodge Southeast region. So stay with us and remember to keep up with everything fishing in Florida. Scan that QR code to check out all of our social media pages, our YouTube channel, Captain Rick Murphy, and on our website, you can find our show merchandise and any products you see here to up your fishing game. So scan and shop away. We'll be right back. The Florida Insider Fishing Report is brought to you by StarTron, start, run, and store with StarTron. Berkeley, your fish, our science. CCA Florida, the voice of recreational anglers for over 35 years. Front Runner Boats, performance built offshore fishing boats made in the USA. Takeuchi, from world first to world leader. The Florida Keys and Key West, come as you are. Murphy's Law Sport Fishing. Book your trip today at murphyslawsportfishing.com and Strike Zone Fishing. Welcome back everyone. Our captain in the Takeuchi Keys region has king fish catching tips galore. So let's get Ridge Murphy on the land to talk to us. What's going on, Ridge? You know, kingfish are drag screaming torpedo style fish that make big runs and skyrocket on their prey. They can be caught on both sides of the highway here in the Alt Equipment region, and they make really good smoked fish dip. If you're gonna go out and target some of these kings, you're gonna wanna use wire stinger rigs with number four wire to number eight wire on a swivel twisted to two treble hooks, and you can use this rig on both spinning rods or conventional tackle. You're gonna wanna bump troll, line, troll flat lines, or fish a big spread with kites using baits like cigar minnows, sardines, Blue runners, goggle eyes, or speedos. Kingfish can be targeted as shallow as 40 feet of water in the sand, spraying ballyhoos all the way to 200, staging up on some of the deeper wrecks. The one thing that you want to keep in mind when you're targeting kingfish is to have the right gaff. A small hook gaff is ideal to make your shots count. I spoke to Captain Mike Cowdy out of Marathon and Captain Justin Miller out of Bud and Mary's, and they both say that the mahi fishing is still really good. 
If you find a floater, it's game on. Schoolies from a thousand to two thousand, with a with a few figure, with a few bigger fish closer inshore, ranging from four hundred to seven hundred feet of water. Keep that in mind when you're making your tack. Do I want to catch quantity or quality? Use ten slammers, sixty five hundred and eight thousand, with twenty pound Berkeley mono line and a forty pound fluorocarbon leader and a seven zero eagle claw J hook. And when it comes to floater fishing, you want to have a wire rod ready or either on a vertical jig or on a trolling lure because there's some wahoos around as a bonus bite. I have a photo of Matt Selma with a really nice wahoo that they caught off a marathon. Nice fish. Nice fish, wow. Ridge. All right, let's go yeah, inshore, yeah. bub. Good one. Red fishing's pretty good in Florida Bay. You want to pull along the flats, looking for the schools, waking up on the flats. Keep an eye out for the sharks because those fish will be close by. You're going to throw gold spoons or bass assassin four inch sea sheds and the wads of fish, and as long as you got it moving, you'll get a bite. Try to keep the presentation going away from the fish and refrain from setting the hook like Bill Dance. Get tight and stay tight just by slightly lifting the rod. The reds are ranging from 23 to 28 inches, and they're being found in big groups, so pick one out of the group and then watch where they go to keep, keep on the fish. Also in shore, I spoke to Captain Jake Turk, and he says that all in between all this weather that we're having, the bone fishing down in Isla Morada has been pretty good. You're going to want to pull along the flats with the current, and the fish will be feeding into the current. You're going to want to look for mudders, tailors, and wakers, and keep an eye out for the stingrays, because just like the red fish, the bone fish will be on the backs of the stingrays. Throw so live shrimp rigged weedless on an eagle claw J hook with a 20 pound leader and one or two small split shots to help you throw it. And I have another photo of Captain Jake Turk and his son Colton with a nice bonefish down in Isla Mirada. Nice, <laughs> nice. I love seeing those little guys being exposed to those screaming drags, you know. All right, Ridge, that thank man, you so much. Colton, it's <clears throat> fun. Yeah, man, thank you so much. We'll talk to you later. It's time for the hot spots from the Florida Keys region, Bree. He said, redfish up on the flats of Florida Bay and look for the schools waking on the surface of the water and pull over to them for a gold spoon or a bass sess and four inch sea shad on a weedless hook. Then if you're offshore, don't be afraid to catch those mahis in all the depths from 400 to 2,000 feet. Look for the debris and the birds working out, but keep in mind that the bigger fish are being caught closer to shore and the numbers of fish are being caught out deeper. Uh, but Ridge said don't set the hook like Bill Dance. Can you show me your Bill Dance set the hook move? Well, he reels down, get it like this, and they rear back like oh, that. I thought it was gonna be And better. most of the time that snatches the lure right out of the fish's face. I knew that, I just wanted you to be technical about it and just show me your build dance. Yeah, that's how you do. Oh, whatever. All right, now it's time to take a look at some tournaments going on in the Florida Keys. Yes. First, we have the Reef Environmental Education Foundation's Lionfish Derby, August 15th through the 17th, ending with a final weigh-in of invasive lionfish catches and public festival at Reef headquarters in Key Largo on August 18th. Next, anglers fish for seven species September 20th through the 22nd in the Herman Lucerne Memorial Backcountry Championship, a one-of-a-kind backcountry tournament that takes place only within the boundaries of Everglades National Park. Then as the Key Largo Rotaries take stock in children backcountry challenge, which allows fishing day and night from Friday, October 4th to Sunday the 6th, followed by the presentation of awards for releases of redfish, snook, and trout in adult and junior divisions. And finally, anglers compete for awards in three divisions, artificial, fly, and baits for the longest bonefish and permit during the 54th annual Isla Mirada Fall, all tackle bonefish and permit championship October 14th through the 16th. For more information on these keys tournaments and more, go to flakeys.com. Yes. <laughs> So you gave me a thumbs up early at the beginning of the show. Yeah. I told you not to put your thumb in that scallop's mouth. What can what? I say, man? The scallops are aggressive. No. No, that didn't happen. I uh, was taking off my daughter's snorkel from her mask. The clip bent it back and ripped my nail off. And here we are. Thumbs That's up it. for life. Thumbs up. Thumbs up. All right, the Casabeja Lodge Southeast region has mm. plenty of options for us inshore and offshore. So let's see what the weekend holds for us with Captain Jimbo Thomas.
Hi, Jimbo. Hey, Bree. Be careful. Those scallops are quite aggressive. They really are. I'm telling I you. I know. I know. They we'll bite back. You. So we do catch plenty of kingfish here in the southeast region. Catch them throughout the year, actually. And one of the best times, and my favorite, is around the full moons of March, April, and May. And that's when we generally catch the most kings and also the largest ones. Now, for the big ones, typically you want to use some live bait. You control also. Uh, popular baits are pilchards, herrings, sardines, goggle eyes, a big speedo. And I like to fish them under a kite, or you can drift them if there's no live bait available or if you don't have any, well, if you have no wind. If there's no live bait available, trolling down deep with a wire line or a planer rig will get uh, king bites as also. also. You want to use a three and a half drone spoon or a sea witch and a bonita strip. That'll get those kings down deep. And a lot of days, the trolling will outfish the live baits. Now, standard depths, anywhere from 80 to 160 feet of water. And you definitely want to use a piece of wire leader because they got some razor sharp teeth, prevent those cutoffs. And uh, the average size is anywhere from four to 20 pounds. And we do catch quite a few larger ones throughout the year. Now, I got a photo here, and this is a full grown kingfish. I think wow. this was a 50 pounder or so. Whoa. This is caught on the party boat reward. They were fishing off government cut. Nice. That is a big in there. Now, we've also been finding dolphin in the past week. We've had some pretty decent days, and then we've had some days where we had to work hard to find a few fish, matter of what you have to find floating for the most part. They've been holding on weed lines, patches of sargasm, and just about anything floating. And most of these fish have had birds working over the top of them. Uh, best steps have been anywhere from 500 feet on out. But the last few days, about 1,000 to 1,200 feet seems to be the magic number. But wherever you find that floating debris, that's where those fish are going to be at. Now, we've been catching them on the troll with rig baits like a ballyhoo, bonita strips, and also small lures and feathers. Once we locate the fish, we've been casting small live baits like a pilcher or a small blue runner and also cut bait like ballyhoos or bonitas on spinning rods. And the fish have been mostly schoolies, but there have been a few larger ones mixed in. Got another photo here. This is a picture of the Maynards and the Foxes with a nice uh, catch of schoolies that we had on Thomas Flyer earlier last week. All right. Now what's... moving inshore, fishing for, tree, for sea trout has been really good. It's been actually the best we've seen in a while. Fishing the flats from Rickenbacker north to Holliver Inlet. You want to use gold bluers or small live pilchers. You want to fish them uh, two to three feet under a popping cork. Use some light tackle. And you want to fish uh, on the flats that have good moving water and uh, work the edges of the, of the flats on the lower stages of the tides and then the potholes on the higher stages fish have been up to three pounds there's actually been some larger ones mixed in as well got another photo here this is frank bella paz with a nice biscayne bay sea trout that he caught on a soft plastic nice. now also we got bonefish and permit biscayne bay the bonefish they've been active on the inside and outside flats and the permit have been mostly on the outside flats from soldiers key south angelfish creek you want to get out there early in the morning before that water heats up and then late in the afternoon, especially if you get a little rainstorm to cool down the water. And the bonefish, they've been coming up on top of the flats and tailing on the lower stages of the tides. And the permit, they've been cruising the hard bottom oceanside flats. In the higher stages of the tides, the permit, they've been up on top of the flats. And then as that water starts to fall, they've been along the deeper edges of the channels. Best bait for both the permit and the tarpon has been a small live crab or a crab pattern fly. All right, Jimbo, let me ask you something. Why do you think the big mahis really haven't showed up yet, bub? Well, they haven't shown up for a number of years, unfortunately. I don't think they're being caught upstream. Something in their migration pattern has definitely changed. Uh, very few large fish, I mean, large being over 15 or 20 pounds, which we used to catch on a daily basis. So something in their migration patterns changed. They're still catching them, but just not off of the East Coast here for some reason. Are you still tagging them on the Thomas Flyer? 
Everyone that we can, you know, if they're not legal size or if we've already got a nice catch, yes, we put a tag in them. So if you catch a tag fish, try and get the number of the tag, call it in and report it so it makes all this tagging worthwhile. All right, bud. Great advice. Thank you so much. We're going to go and take a look at the Black Oak LED hotspots from the southeast region. He says, inshore, look for the bonefish and the permit on the inside and outside flats of Biscayne Bay. Use a quarter size crab on the edge uh, uh, on an Eagle Claw 3 0 circle hook. And then offshore, troll rig uh, baits and small lures or cast live or cut baits to dolphin offshore around the weed patches, floating debris and under the birds. Do I need to read the next thing for you, Bree? <laughs> I'm okay. You just, just, ra- just ran your thumb right into the side of the desk. It attacked me. I don't know what to say. Um, yeah, I got this. When you're on the road, make sure you show your support for Florida's fisheries <laughs> with a conserved Florida's what fisheries mess. license plate. Funds from the sale of the redfish tag directly support protecting and enhancing marine resources, habitat restoration, water quality, and coastal environmental education. Make sure you get yours now at your local DMV or redfishtag.com. I know. I'm the good thing is, like- <laughs> the good thing is, if your car breaks down, you're ready to go. You can get hitchhike your way home with that. Somebody come get me. I need help. <laughs> Coming up, we're casting into the all equipment southwest region with Captain Ron so- Houston. So stay with us, and we'll be right back on the Florida <laughs> Insider Fishing Report, Hitchhiker Edition. Yeah. The Florida Insider Fishing Report is brought to you by Yamaha. Reliability starts here. Fenwick. Feel everything. Island Lures, Tournament Tackle, the IGFA. Every fish, every water, every angler since 1939. Sportsman's Adventures with Captain Rick Murphy. 30 years of fishing for adventure. Berkeley Prospect Chrome. Real Legends, available at bellsflorida.com. And Taco Marine, Master the Catch. Today's Power Pole Tip of the Week is about the sportsmen's. Guys, if you own a big aluminum boat, a pontoon boat, or even a flat bottom boat, this is the pole that you should consider. It has the ability to hold up to a 4,500 pound boat. Keep in mind that it has also a great quiet pump as well as it comes in a matte black finish and an eight foot model. The other thing that I love about it is its price point. A single pole is only gonna cost $1,299. So if you're considering buying a shallow water anchor, you might wanna look at the Sportsman's. And remember this, the Sportsman's has all the great features that all of our other power pole anchors have to offer. You can simply go to your power pole dealer nearest you, or you can go to powerpole.com, and that's today's power pole tip of the week. You know, Bree, you just yes. put a power pole on your boat. We did. I'm about to get another one. Oh, you're getting another one? We're going to get two. Two is better, two's than, better one. than one. That's right. Am I right? Yeah, All give right. me a thumbs up. Thumbs up. <laughs> Okay. All right, there's a lot to talk so. about in the also okay. equipment southwest region for your weekend ahead. So let's get Captain Ronnie Houston on the line with the details. Rick, go for it. Well, guys, it's great to be here. And, you know, actually, <laughs> kingfish can be caught throughout the whole region. Now, early spring and late fall, depending upon uh, how our winters play out, if the winter comes early, if it comes late, it, it's going to determine the bite. You know, you can catch them as close to the beach line and beyond and beyond. You know, your wrecks, your artificial reefs is when a target, areas of hard bottom. And don't discount those large bait schools when you're out there running. Now, a couple of different ways for baits you can catch them. You can troll large lip plugs or silver spoons. Or if you like live baits, live baits are very popular, like the blue runners. Herring and also ladyfish will work. You can also catch, uh, you know, bigger loner fish while fishing Spanish mackerel schools. You can eat Spanish mackerel schools. Just drop a large live bait down below and you might surprise yourself. Now, when you're specifically targeting kingfish, you also want to make sure you're using wire and stinger hooks. They're going to be recommended. And I've got a nice kingfish that's caught in the region, uh, basically about what I was talking about by Hogwall Charter. Oh, wow. Nice. Next piece, is going to be, next piece is going to be the yellowtails and the mangrove snappers. Now, that bite still remains good before and starting right now as the sea is settled after the storm we had anywhere from Naples to Fort Myers Beach. 85 to 105 feet, I'm getting information is the key. Uh, wrecks and ledges coming, but you know, if the Gulf stirred up, still stirred up, you can go with heavier leaders. 
But as that water starts to clean up, you might have to drop back down, you know, your 15, 20 pound fluorocarbons. You can catch them a couple different ways. You can use small cut bait, you can use live pilchards, and you can either flatline them, you can use just a little weight, uh, bright colored troll rights, or simply using trick chicken rigs off the bottom, all depending upon where they are in the water column. And a picture of some yellowtails caught with Gordy Watson down here in Naples. Nice. Inshore bite, you know, the snook. That's been great right now. With the abundance of fresh water we've had before and after Tropical Storm Debbie, Everglades backcountry bite is really fired up, especially in areas of current. You want to concentrate in areas of feeder creeks, points, and jogs in the shoreline. You can also fish the Caloosahatchee River and Peace River. All three areas, you can work the same pattern. And once you find them, these fish are schooled up right now in that current. You can use a variety of baits. You can use prop baits. You can use chugging lures. Top water uh, Berkeley cane walkers and jay walkers. Sizes in the cane walkers going to be the 110. Jay walkers going to be 120s. Uh, four to five inch soft plastic jerk baits in brighter colors that really stand out in that tannic water. And I got a nice picture uh, of a nice many snook that were caught that day as the approach of Debbie was coming through. I was able to get out in the Gulf. We had a northeast wind, so it was beautiful weather. We caught plenty of snook. Last species is going to be the redfish. That bite also remains consistent, and I have seen improvement with all the fresh water we have had in the last few weeks and the passing of the storm. Concentrate your areas from Coon Key to Pavilion Key. Now, your middle bay is holding fish along Deadwood and areas of Oyster Bottom. No, not as many fish, but the outer gulf has really seemed to be fish are schooling up. We're coming into August, and all the fresh water, once you find them, they're schooled up. Baits you can catch them on right now are cut mullet, cut ladyfish, live pinfish, bright colored bucktails tipped with shrimp, gold spoons in that tannic water, root beer and golden brim colored bass assassin paddle tails, and top water walker dog lures. Uh, all these baits are working, and I got a picture of a nice fish that was recently caught while fishing with Derek Daffin down in the Florida Everglades. Wind's going to be out of the west most of the week. Looks like it's turning to the east. Should improve the weather on the outer gulf. So, Ronnie, you've been fishing the new Fenwick World Class as well as the Elite. Now that you had a chance to get familiar with all the different sizes, what do you like it? Well, one of the most things I like is I like that 8 to 17 in the World Class of the Elite. It's a medium. It's a 7-foot run. What I like it, it loads up. Whether you're using a circle hook on a jig or a jig or a top water walk to dog lure, the customers I've been fishing, they love that rod, and it's real simple to use that rod with the light tip on that medium, especially like using a cane walker or a jay walker. A lot of the guys have trouble throwing, uh, you know, walk the dog lures. If you don't get the, you know, the walk the dog lure right, you're not going to catch fish. But that medium 8 to 17, it's a no-brainer with a couple of those lures. I strongly suggest it, and I'll tell you what, I'm catching some fish in a 40-inch class on a 3,000 battle with an 8 to 17 medium. All right, Midnight, thank you so much. We're going to go ahead and check out the battery tender hot spots from the southwest region. He says inshore snook and juvenile tarpon and largemouth bass in the local spillways, bridge spans, and residential canals. Current flow is a must. Offshore African pompano, 75 to 95 feet of water using pinfish pilchers, cigar minnow chunks, cut squid on light jig heads. Well, that's checkmate, everyone. The kings are out there to be caught, so go forth, our faithful anglers, and catch them up. You like that? I do. I brought her in. But stay with us, and we will tell you what we're stocking next week. I have a feeling we're very excited. I like next week. You do like next week. We'll be back. Okay, so next week we are talking, go ahead, Rick. Redfish. Redfish. Red that fish. is Rick's. Dave, you and I don't even have to show up next week. Because nope. Oh, I'm going He's got the I'm entire gonna. show. I'm show going up. to. Nope. He's just not going to talk about it. Plus, we have our live studio audience, which okay. I mentioned earlier in the show. I'm going to need nice. some help handling all these Yeah, people. so I got to be here. All so you got to be here. I got to make sure I'm here every fish. week. Every week. Every week. Dave needs to get paid. That's right. <laughs> That's right. We all do. We all do. <laughs> Boss man's right here. But make sure you sign up for that audience if you are in the area and want to attend. It's going to be a fun show. Rick's going to give away all of his secrets. I am giving away every and half his tackle box. There is. Every single one. And all my redfish lure. <laughs> Sounds great. Thanks no. for tuning in, guys. We will no. see you next no. week. Bye. Bye.